Hey guys, how you doing? I'm not gonna be watching YouTube shorts for a while. So I'm just gonna chill. Fortnite messed up on the new Thor skins. Let me explain. So, as usual, the hammer can only be equipped by Thor Odinson, Mighty Thor, OG Thor, and Captain America, which, while annoying, is accurate to Marvel, so I'll let it slide. But where they really messed up is Stormbreaker. Arguably, one of the coolest pickaxes in the game can only be used by those same skins. However, it was literally confirmed by Marvel years ago that Stormbreaker does not require worthiness, so we should be able to use it with any skin. Come on, for Fortnite messed up on the new Thor skins. Let me explain. Get ready, I hear an enemy coming. Just give me a second, I gotta reload my LMG. No problem, I'll cover you, just hurry it up. Hey man, I can use a little help here. Just give me a second, I'm still reloading. Still? How much longer? I'm nearly halfway there. Oh great, I accidentally meleeed midway through reloading. I gotta restart. Just switch your other weapon. Oh, good idea. Oh, I need to reload this one too. Why are you carrying around two LMGs? There, all done reloading. Greg? Get ready, I hear an enemy coming. Just give me a second, I gotta reload my... Back in the 1970s, a group of fishermen from Florida decided to organize a campaign to dump around 2 million tires into the Atlantic Ocean right outside the coast of Fort Lauderdale. Their goal was to try and create an artificial coral reef, using the tires as a foundation for more coral to grow on. More coral would then mean more habitats for fish and other sea life, and that would be good for the ocean. It really did seem like a good plan back then, but things didn't quite go the way people thought they would. You see, the tires were dropped in large bundles of steel and rope to make sure they would always stay in one place for the coral to actually grow. Unfortunately, the ocean quickly corroded both of these materials, and as hurricanes and storms continued to come through the area, the tires were pushed everywhere, not only ruining any new coral growth, but also squashing and killing tons of old and natural coral. Since no new organisms could actually grow where these tires were, people involved soon realized they had to now remove all 2 million of these tires, but this time, one by one. It was estimated to cost so much that actual tire removal wasn't even started until decades later in 2001. As of 2019, only 250,000 tires have been removed, and there are still people working on it to this day. Back in the 1970s, a group of fishermen from Florida decided to organize a campaign to dump around... In 2005, a concerned mom from the U.S. named Carolyn Smith wanted to send her son to a private school to try to give him a better education. The problem was, she couldn't afford the tuition, so she came up with a rather unique plan to try to make some more money. Carolyn decided to sell her forehead on eBay as advertising space, and she claimed that whichever person or company bid the highest in her auction, she would get a permanent tattoo of their name in that area. She probably had her haters, people who thought she was dumb and that no one would actually bid. But after a small but feisty bidding war between a few companies below $1,000, an online casino called Golden Palace came and and dropped $10,000. True to her word, Carolyn had their website name, goldenpalace.com, permanently tattooed on her forehead. It's unknown whether she still has it there today, but she was able to send her son to private school. And apparently this little bit of marketing was so successful for Golden Palace, they later bought even more tattoos on several other people. In 2005, a con Recently, a 54-year-old man from Las Vegas named Kevin Ford went viral online for sharing a video of the gift that his co-workers got for him for his 27th anniversary of working at Burger King. In those 27 years, Kevin had apparently never even taken a single workday off. And since Burger King never gave him anything or even acknowledged him for his dedication, his co-workers decided to use their own money to buy him a small gift to show their appreciation. The gift came in a little goodie bag and included candy, a coffee cup, a lanyard, and a movie ticket. And even though that was a very small gift for 27 years of hard work, Kevin still posted about just how grateful he was and how loyalty really does pay off. When that video started to blow up online with thousands of people telling Kevin that he deserves so much more, his daughter created a GoFundMe for him. She hoped to raise $200 so that her dad could go see his grandchildren, who he hadn't seen in over four years and really missed. But to their incredible shock, the campaign absolutely shattered that goal and raised over $370,000 for him. Even better, he was invited to appear on the Today Show and was finally reunited with his grandkids on live TV. Kevin says he has no plans to retire or go on vacation and just wants to spend time with his grandkids and then work. Recently, a 54-year-old man from Las Vegas named Kevin Ford. In 1944, during World War II, a 21-year-old British flight sergeant named Nicholas Alchemade was returning from a bombing raid with his team when they were suddenly ambushed by enemy aircraft. Although the pilot desperately tried to escape from the enemies, the plane's fuselage was hit, causing it to catch fire. And once the pilot realized they were going down, he quickly ordered everyone to grab a parachute and jump. But when Nicholas went to get his parachute, to his horror, he realized it was burning and no longer worked. Since there were no extra parachutes and the fire was spreading quickly, Nicholas knew this had to be the end. Not wanting to go painfully in the flames, he forced himself to jump, hoping that would make things quicker. But after falling 18,000 feet to the ground, he woke up and he was still breathing. 
turns out, Nicholas pretty much had a perfect landing, with soft pine trees and snow completely breaking his fall. What's crazy is that he was barely even injured, he only had a sprained leg and a couple of cuts. When the Germans found him and interrogated him, they thought he was completely lying, until they found his crashed plane with all the details checking out. Before they sent him to POW camps, the Germans gave him an official document certifying his claims, since they said no one would believe him after the war. He survived those camps and went on to live for 47 more years. In 1944, during World War II, a 21... In 2012, a 19-year-old girl from Nebraska named Hannah Sabata robbed a bank with a gun and then successfully escaped by stealing someone's brand new car. When she returned home and counted her money, she realized she had gotten just over $6,200. And when she thought about all the things she could buy with that money, she was ecstatic and decided to record a YouTube video for herself to celebrate. In her 8-minute video, which she titled Chick Rob's Bank, Hannah describes today as the happiest day of her life and then goes into detail about her entire armed robbery. Wearing the exact same clothes she wore during the robbery, Hannah mentions how the government stole her baby and charged her with neglect. She then says she's about to go on a massive shopping spree. Unsurprisingly, later that same day, police showed up to her house and she was arrested. In court, she actually told the judge that she didn't know robbing a bank would cause her to go to jail. But regardless, she was sentenced to 10 to 20 years in prison and is still serving that sentence today. Interestingly, her YouTube video can still also be found online. In, 2012, in 2016, a 14-year-old girl from Australia named Jade Meister became the youngest person in history to ski to the North Pole anywhere outside the last degree. Later that year, she was invited to give a TED Talk about her journey, where she delivered a confident and inspirational speech encouraging other young women to be more active in chasing their dreams. But when Jade went to check the comments on her speech's YouTube video afterwards, she noticed that a bunch of people were being super misogynistic and repeatedly telling her to make them a sandwich. So, that's exactly what she decided to do. In 2018, Jade successfully skied over 600 kilometers to arrive at the South Pole. This made her the youngest person to ever complete the polar hat trick, which involves skiing around the North Pole, across Greenland's largest ice cap, and then around the South Pole. But turns out, Jade had actually brought a ham and cheese sandwich with her that she had made all the way down to the South Pole. Jade later posted this photo on social media with the caption, I made you a sandwich. Now ski 37 days and 600 kilometers to the South Pole and you can eat. In 2016, a 14-year-old girl from Australia named Jade Hamais. In 1986, a 28-year-old man from India named Neelam Kumar Kero wanted to try to break the world record for the longest time spent in an enclosed space with venomous snakes. You see, when Neelam Kumar was younger, he worked at a holiday home near Bombay where there were always tons of different snakes slithering around. As he began carrying even the most venomous of species in his hands and releasing them into the wild, he became fascinated with the beautiful creatures and wanted to learn more about them. He had come to view snakes as his friends. So when he learned about a South African man who had recently set a world record for staying with 18 venomous snakes, for 50 hours, he became determined to try and beat that. Neelam Kumar decided to create a small glass room and fill it with 72 different snakes, 68 of which were so venomous they could easily kill him with a single bite. And then, under the supervision of a Guinness Book of World Records official, he stayed in that room for 72 hours straight. Incredibly, when he came out, he was completely unharmed. And since he had to gently remove snakes from his body every time they got too close, he saw this experiment as proof that snakes would only attack if provoked. He went on to start a non-profit in India that protects and spreads awareness about snakes. He would even have a new snake named after him. In 1986, a 28-year-old man from India named Neelam... In 2019, three teenagers from Canada named Aaron McQuillan, Bailey Campbell, and Billy Tarbett were walking to get donuts late at night when they came across a woman on the side of the road with smoke coming out of her car. Since they were all huge car enthusiasts, they decided to stop by and see what was going on or if they could help. And when they checked under the hood for the woman, who had no idea what was going on, they realized there was a dangerous leak in the engine, meaning the car probably wasn't safe to drive. When they told the lady she needed repairs and for someone to come tow her car, she was worried because she couldn't afford a tow truck. Since she lived more than five miles from there, she was scared she wouldn't be able to get herself and her car back home safely. So, the teenagers literally offered to help push her car all the way back. To the woman's surprise, the boys just pulled out a couple bottles of water and a speaker and started cheerfully walking along with the car, all while jamming out to the music. A while after they started, a man named Dan Morrison drove by and saw what was happening, so he began slowly driving behind them to give them cover and light. More than two and a half hours later, they finally arrived to the woman's home, and afterwards, Dan shared the boy's story on Facebook, hoping to get some recognition. His post was shared more than 420,000 times, and the three became heroes in their hometown. In 2019, three teenagers from Canada named Aaron McQuillan, Bailey... In 1965, a 90-year-old woman from France named Jeanne Calmont was approached by a lawyer named André Francois, who offered to buy the apartment she was living in using a sort of contingency contract. The contract allowed Jeanne to stay in her apartment for as long as she liked, and every month that she stayed, André would actually pay her 2,500 francs. But the moment she passed away, the apartment would belong to him, and he wouldn't have to pay anymore. You see, André had done his research beforehand, and he learned that Jeanne had been regularly smoking cigarettes for at least 60 years, and still did. Since she also often consumed large amounts of chocolate and wine, he figured she'd be passing away any day now, and he'd get her apartment for a very low cost. Because Jeanne didn't have any living heirs to claim the property, she agreed to the 
deal. But to Andre's surprise, as her 95th, 100th, 105th, and 110th birthdays came and went, she was still breathing. 115 passed without problem, and shortly after Jean turned 120, Andre himself passed away at 77. His wife had to continue paying for him. And in the end, Jean lived to be 122, making her the oldest well-documented human to ever live. In total, Andre paid her more than 900,000 francs, more than double the original value of the apartment. In 1965, a in 1992, a 44-year-old doctor from London named Margaret McCullum met and fell in love with an actor named Oswald Lawrence. Since they both really enjoyed each other's company, they soon got married. And after happily living together for 15 years, Oswald sadly passed away in 2007. Although Margaret was devastated, there was one little thing her husband had left behind that always helped bring her peace. You see, back in 1993, Oswald had been hired as a voice actor for the London Underground Subway. And ever since then, his voice could be heard throughout the entire length of the northbound Northern Line, saying the iconic phrase, Mind the Gap. Every day on her way to work, Margaret could hear and be reminded of her husband's voice. And when the pain of the loss started to hurt too much, she'd sometimes just sit at a local subway station to listen to the announcements a while longer. But just before Christmas in 2012, Margaret was at the station when she realized Oswald's voice had been replaced. His announcement was long outdated, so it had been removed everywhere. She was terrified of losing this last piece of her husband. But when she told London Underground staff about it, they not only found the old original recording for her, but also even restored Oswald's voice at her local station. He can probably still be heard there to this day. In 1992, a 44-year-old back in the 1970s, a group of fishermen from Florida decided In 2018, a 5-year-old autistic boy from Delaware named Timmy Vick was told by his doctor that he had a brain tumor and that he needed surgery to remove it. His parents wanted to do something for him to cheer him up, and since they knew he really liked WWE wrestling and always slept with his wrestling belts, they had an idea. They decided to send two of Timmy's belts to a wrestling belt artist named Sergio Moreira, who customizes them and makes them look even cooler. But tragically, when the belts were shipped to Sergio's house in Washington, he wasn't home and they were stolen by two porch pirates. Timmy's parents were devastated, but luckily, Sergio had actually recorded the entire thing on his doorbell camera. He quickly posted the footage online, explaining Tim's situation and asking people if they knew where the belts were. No one expected anyone to find them. But just two days later, the original thieves themselves came back to drop off the package and afterwards just left. Along with the untouched belts, the thieves also left a four-page letter profusely apologizing for their actions. They explained that homelessness and drug problems had caused them to start stealing. But never in a million years did they expect to steal from a sick kid, and they were disgusted with themselves. They both promised to get clean and sober, and as for Timmy, he absolutely loved his gift. In 2018, a 5-year-old autistic boy from Delaware named Timmy Vick. In 1987, a 74-year-old man from China named Bai Feng Li decided to finally retire from his job and return to his hometown to spend the rest of his life with his family. But as he was walking through his hometown, having just arrived back, he suddenly came across a group of children working in the fields. When Bai asked why the children weren't at school, his relatives told him it was likely they just couldn't afford the tuition. And since Bai himself had always regret the fact that he never learned to read, he was deeply saddened that these children too would never have an education. So, despite his children telling him not to, he decided to donate all of his retirement money, around 5,000 yuan, to make sure some of the children could go to school. But since that wasn't enough for him, he decided to come out of retirement and again started pedaling his pedicab. Despite his age, he began tirelessly working every single day, literally from dawn to dusk. He moved into a very small room and started wearing cheap clothes and eating cheap food. And later, he started an education support fund and opened a small store to get more money. He worked like this until he literally couldn't work anymore at age 90. Throughout this time, he gave away everything he earned, totaling 350,000 yuan to help low-income kids go to school. Although Bai passed away in 2005, he left an incredible legacy. In 1987, a 74-year-old man from China named Bai Feng Li decided to finally retire from his job. You guys gotta see this last, um, I have too much watch that you guys never see. Make infinite Johnny Depp's for a million likes? I don't want to be afraid, the deeper that I go, it takes my breath away. sound on a short in my video I mean in my shorts on my channel go check that out
that's all for today today guys i can't speak i hope you enjoyed this video and have a and have an awesome rest of the day and morning yeah see you next time oh and i'm sorry that i haven't recorded in forever you're on fortnite yeah see you guys bye